Hello again, Math Ninja here, and today we're going to be taking an aside from real analysis and discuss. Well, I have this friend, his name is Christian, and he needs assistance in probability. <coughs> in life, you need to know probability. The probability of succeeding in life, probability of failing. Very important. You need to know it. So, this is actually. If you want more knowledge, theoretical knowledge on probability, I recommend uh, taking measure theory. Because measure theory is actually what's used to derive probability. So, today we'll be talking first about random variables. So, a random variable is something you don't know the value of it yet. So, for example, I roll a dice. And I don't know what the outcome's gonna be. It could be one through six. But we know <coughs> the outcome has to be one of those. So we have our space. What we care about with the random variable is not what the outcome is, but the probability that that will be the outcome. So for example, for a dice, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. We don't care when we roll the dice what it's gonna end up. We only care about what's gonna be Probability-wise, on the long run, if the probability of getting a 1 is 90%, probability of getting everything else uh, much smaller, that, that's what we care about. So, the way that we... There's two types of random variables. <coughs> One, continuous random variable. Because we can write the distribution of probability as a continuous function. Actually, there's three types of random variable. Continuous, discrete, and mixed. Mixed is both continuous in one part, but then discrete, so there's a jump. For example, we can say there's an experiment which we, where there's a probability in which record, re requires a discrete variable and a the continuous one. So rolling a dice and flip, wait, um, no. So, how long it takes to take the computer to shut off. And that's a continuous. And rolling a dice, that's discrete. And the sum of it, <coughs> or a combination of it, will be uh, mixed. However, we'll not talk about mixed variables today. But if you wanted to see what it looked like, it would be, for example, a mix. If you looked at it, it's probably a distribution function. Or, yeah. It would probably look like, and then, let's see. One. A jump here. There will be a discontinuous function. But let's not talk about that today. So, first things first. Random variable that is discrete. It takes... It's one main thing about discrete. It has to be countable. Countable, and in our case, <coughs> discrete doesn't have to be finite. But in our case, let's say it's finite. So it's simpler. Because my Christian friend, well, he's not Christian as in religion, but Christian as his name, he, he just does not want to be amazingly confused. So let's say we have a finite set. A equals, let's say, so x can take on the value. Um, can take on values. x1, x2, up to x0, or xn. So, if we look at this in, as a PMF, we look at each very, each probability of each outcome. So this guy would look like, let's just say for ease, the sequence number, one, two, three, n. Remember, we enumerated all the possibilities. The three axioms of probability. Each one of these guys should be between, should be less than or equal to one and greater than zero or greater than or equal to zero. Second axiom, of, well, let's forget the third. Let's see. Second axiom of probability. The sum of all these guys must equal to one. We need the entire space to have a probability. And the probability of any possibility has to equal one. That is how we define our probability. That's why 
how we derive this from measure theory. Very important aspect. Now, this is an example of something very simple. We have a finite set, we assign things. But what if we want to model it in an interesting way, in one of those famous modeling ways? <coughs> There's many ways to model things. And this highlighter is hotter, and this marker is horrible. horrible. So, let's say, simple thing. The magic mahjong piece. It's like flipping a coin. One side is dagger, other side is flower. If I throw this up in the air, there's a probability that it's gonna land on flower. Let's call that probability P. Remember, it can only be either flower or dagger, meaning by the third law of probability, this, it has probability of it being dagger has to be one minus P. Then is it oh, still four more minutes? <coughs> so this is called a burn. If we saw this as a discrete probability, this is the random variable, the throwing of the mahjong tile. Now, this is actually. We can see this as a Bernoulli distribution. P. One minus P. All this is below one. Let's say this is the first one. This is the second one. So this is an example of a Bernoulli random variable. <coughs> now let's go on to a few more, more complex ones, because this is the easiest of the easiest. Actually, it could be even easier. You could say that you only have one variable that always lands, that always has the outcome that it's going to be uh, one. Or even better, you have a random variable of me becoming rich one day, and I, I always be rich. So that is a good random variable. That is, that is, that's the trivial one. You, you, and of course you can't have a random variable with none, because if you did that, there be, wouldn't be a probability. Oh, by the way, we need these outcomes also to be disjoint. If it was not disjoint, we would have problems. In fact, when we talk about things that aren't, when we talk about things overall, or everything less than or equal to a certain, a certain outcome, then we, we probably have to talk about the cumulative distribution function. But for now, let, let's just keep it disjoint events in this grid. So <coughs> let's look at something else. I flip a coin 10 times. Let's just say I flipped the mahjong tile 10 times. How many times would it come up dagger? That's an interesting question. This is called binomial distribution. <coughs> Why is it called that? <coughs> well, first, the formula looks like a binomial distribution. But except there's no big double sum. There's no double sum. There's no sum. But why is it binomial? Because it either some of these guys either be head, or either be dagger, or some of these guys, or, and the rest of these guys must be flower. So, how do we think about this mathematically? So, we can say, so the probability of getting exactly one dagger, <coughs> we have to say, out of n throws, is n choose k. So we're choosing K of them to be dagger. The probability of getting dagger is P to the K. Probability of not getting dagger. One minus P to N minus K. <coughs> that is good. Now, we can notice that if we switch, <coughs> if we say, if we looked at it the other way, What's the probability of getting nine, uh, uh, nine uh, flowers? It'll be exactly the same thing. So you can actually, if you see this as a probability mass function, it will be symmetric, which is very pretty. Very pretty. So it look like, and the maximum will occur in the middle. So remember, this itself, and this is also, this is, and we looked, we, the way we view the probability mass function is, for example, we line up, 
This is the this is K. This is one dagger, two dagger, three dagger, up to n daggers. Because and this is we just enumerate all the possibilities. We can't have zero daggers. We can't have a million daggers. We can only have a discrete value between zero. Ooh.